All right. So I brought in this roll of sketches I have uh, to show you some of this, uh, some of what I've done. Uh, I decided to do my sketches on a roll like this because I had a long time ago I saw a video of Scott Robertson saying that when he first started teaching, he needed some samples to show students. So he sketched on a roll because then he couldn't make any mistake. Well, many mistakes. Well, he could make mistakes, but then they would show up. So you'd have to figure out how to make those mistakes work for you. So when I first started teaching at Art Center, I thought I would do the same thing to have a, a sample to show my students. So let's take a look at this role. Right. Uh, they hired me to teach visual communication, so I started off with that. Right. Some of the warm-ups I do of just straight lines, curved lines, starting to draw some boxes in there to practice. Um, right. Just simple stuff. One of the hardest things about sketching on a roll like this is that you cannot um, rotate the page at all, um, which is something that I think is really important in sketching. But it's still a nice challenge to go with. Another thing about this, right, I was probably using a Sharpie because this uh, craft paper kind of eats up markers and I want to be able to um, go pretty quick and pretty rough with it. Uh, the, the tooth and the grain on this paper is, again, is pretty rough. So just doing multiple sketches and now for, after warming up with some simple shapes, we see me go into sketch some cameras. Uh, a few of them were cameras I didn't have, but then I started sketching a camera I did have, and the reason I started sketching a camera I did have is because I could look at it from all these different angles. Right, so I'm sort of building on each sketch, adding more and more details. One of the things I'm, I'm doing, you know, as I keep going along here, is trying to keep simple forms at first. So, you know, just playing around with anything I'm doing here, doing some cars for fun, doing a jetpack. Um, trying to have some transitions between certain things. It's like the curvature of this person kind of transitioning into the feet of this bed there. I don't know why, I drew a nutcracker or some toothpaste. Pretty much just whatever came to mind is what I started working on. But I do have a love for cameras, so I started to do some more cameras again. Uh, playing Magnum, this is a brand of marker, I believe, and they had like a gold pen, so I recently bought it and I thought I'd try it out. It was nice. It didn't read too well on the uh, paper here, so I, we probably won't really see that much again. Practicing sketching hands, that's always important for product designers, entertainment designers, pretty much anyone who's designing. You should know how to draw hands. They're great at showing scale. Uh, they're great at showing people using products and holding them. Uh, so again, just hands holding different phones in different ways. And you know, as tech, modern technology, lots of things are little squares in our hands, so it's nice to be able to be able to draw that. Sketching some of the markers, right, that I was using to actually do all of these sketches. Again, I think this is that Magnum. This is some sort of Sharpie. This is, I think, like a white uh, marker from Prisma or Faber-Castell. Can't remember which one. Totoro, I don't know why he's surprised, or she, not really sure what Totoro is. Um, drawing some lamps, again, back to cameras again, cutting film, so I just sketched some scissors. Uh, this was fun to do like a Polaroid and draw it as it was open and closed. I started to draw some bags, for whatever reason, this bag kind of looked like toast, so I started, so then I let my mind wander and started to sketch some bread. So I started drawing some bread this way, some bags this way. Uh, somehow, don't know where Iron Man came from, but he ended up on the page here. Continue to draw bags. Uh, bring back some of my ideas from earlier. We have this uh, sandwich pocket, right? So it's a pocket on your backpack specifically for sandwiches. Is it a silly idea? Yes, but it was fun to sketch, right? So we kept going to sandwiches and then uh, also drawing cars and decided to draw Porsche sandwich, a Porsche witch. So this is a sandwich that has the forms of a Porsche. Fastest sandwich you'll ever eat. All right, if we keep going here, some, from bags to shoes. So I guess generally my mindset might have been about soft goods. Sandwiches can be soft sometimes, so that's where that fits in. But doing shoes, I used to design shoes for a little bit, and mostly shoes are designed from side view. Uh, I think some of these shoes, I'm kind of designing them with like robots in mind, because robots should wear shoes. 
and more cameras. Um, this is a film camera I own. Uh, again, so it's nice to do things that you own because you can sketch them from multiple different angles. Packaging. Um, so just interested in sketching some simple shapes, but then also kind of doing the graphics and the perspective on those shapes. So I believe, again, for all these, I'm looking at some reference online for these different packages. Little perspective and shading in here to give it more depth. Drawing some milk. And then here was this fun idea I had a long time ago uh, for cereal milk. It's milk that tastes like different cereals. Um, so I started to just do some lettering practice for that, some drawing some of the different cereals that I might have in there. We might see some more cereal milk stuff later on, I think. And of course, always keep coming back to cameras on the page here. Again, simple 2D views, building up, adding more and more details on there. Starting to look at some little 3D or 360 degree camera here and some of the forms in there, a toothbrush much closer. Oh, so Things Come Apart, A Teardown for Manual Living by Todd McClellan. This is one of my favorite product books. So I just started, opened up the book and started sketching some of the things from that book. Actually, let's go back here. If you're gonna sketch something from reference, it's always good to make note of the reference to give credit where credit is due, but also in case you wanna go back and find that reference again, you know where to go, right? So if I didn't have this here, I would have might have looked at this page and oh, I did this exploded view of a fire extinguisher. But now I know better that yes, I sketched this, but I sketched it from this person's reference so I can give credit where credit is due. So he's got a fire extinguisher here. We got a Swiss Army knife. We got a dial combination lock that has 20 components. We got a handheld uh, phone. And keep going, some, some bags, some chairs. Starting to use a thinner pen, doesn't really stand out as well on this page. And ending with a scene from Twin Peaks. Uh, one of, uh, actually, I'm not gonna show it to you because I don't wanna spoil the end of season one. So we're only gonna show this part, we're not gonna show the second part. And I'm pretty sure, let's look at this off screen. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the end of the roll, so we're gonna roll over this roll over the spoiler, and yeah, that's the end of it. Um, this, I don't, I don't recall the measurement of this. I think it might have been like 25 feet. I bought a roll that was 100 feet long, and I was like, that's way too much to do with 100 feet or whatever that was, but uh, 25 somehow seemed more manageable. Um, it was only like 20 or 30 bucks. The paper's a little rough, not as uh, fine, as some of the other papers we'll probably be sketching on as you go through the courses. But it's a great way to just get some papers, some things down the page. And it's also really great because it forces you to deal with any mistakes you have and make them work for you. Because I was surprised looking at this, not once did I see any mistake that I made. I'm not saying I didn't make any mistakes. I'm saying that when you do make a mistake, you make it work for you, right? You make it so that you can't see it anymore, right? Now I'm going back looking for mistakes. Like, yeah, and look at this, maybe there's a, this is a little sparse, right? I didn't like this sketch, but I didn't draw any attention to it when I was going around with you, right? So you can just sort of focus on the ones you like, add more detail to them, and then don't focus so much on the ones that you don't like. So now I'm gonna go through a sketchbook I have from one of my, First started teaching VizCom 2 at Art Center. It has a bunch of demos in there. Let's see what I have. Um, always label your sketchbooks, right? And put some way someone can contact with you in case you lose it. I have been fortunate enough to never lose a sketchbook out uh, when I'm sketching in it. Um, but just in case, I'm prepared. Um, also, this sketchbook is very old in terms of how much I've used it. And we can see the papers completely come out of the binding because I've used it so much. All right, so we got some random products in here, some hatching demos, sketching a camera, right? Typically when I sketch something, I start with some simple sketches and go to s and s keep adding more and more detail as I go on, right? Simple as far as like 2D into 3D, into adding textures and lighting on it. Same thing with this chair here. Lots of my sketching is observational sketching, is like learning from looking at things. So 
right? I don't focus on every sketch being great. I focus on learning something each time I'm sketching. All right, so you got some chairs here, some more chairs. I, oh yeah, I remember this demo at Ikea, right? So we went to Ikea, sketched some chairs, and here I'm looking at the chair from different angles, right? That in person, I could turn this chair over and I would never find this image online. So that's the nice thing about having the thing in front of you is you can like look at it from whatever view you want to. More chairs, more chairs, more chairs. Drawing some cars, right? Again, simple side view going into 3D, focusing my detail in one little area. I remember there must have been a question about how to do lighting on the headlights of the car. So that's why I have both this little demo right here and I could go back and finish this later on if I want to. But I focus on this right here, and I did a couple of little sketches right here to show people, uh, again, my approach overall to doing this light right there. And for some reason, there's a little rat with a lunch. All right, so sketch in some, I could think of like a McLaren uh, right here. Scooter Rabbit, again, simple sketches at first, slowly getting closer and closer and adding more detail to it. Little highlights to draw attention to that on the page. Uh, Bonneville Triumph, again, as much as possible when you know what the thing that you're sketching is, label it somewhere on the page. These pages are incomplete, right? We got this space on the bottom. I can always go look up more images of this or go find some of the uh, sample uh, photos I took and finish these pages up if I wanted to. Some trains, a vacuum, I'm trying to show like, how different ways we can do background, right? It's a vacuum, so it cleans things up. So I made my background kind of dirty so the vacuum could clean it up. Triceratops. So some people might look at this right here, they see the marker coming through and like, oh no, that's terrible. But it's a sketchbook. You know, this is what happens. I'm not expecting this thing to be perfect. You shouldn't either. So don't, don't get too hung up on like marker bleeding through the back. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes you can make it even work for you as far as like the design that works on both sides of the page. But if it happens, it happens, no big deal. Discussing some triceratops at the Natural History Museum, showing people how to like redesign things based upon different forms. So taking this lamp and making it inspired by a moose. Looking at some gorillas, how to do reflections and lightings. Again, lots of little demos and samples going on here. This is an Okapi. Um, I intended to finish this page for a long time, but never did. I have lots of unfinished pages because I'm just sketching so much um, and moving on to stuff that I don't have enough time to finish everything that I start. A little lighting here, a little sample of the lighting, uh, simplifying it in a sort of pris cubic form to show basically how approaching lighting on this tortoise right there. More tortoise and lighting, some fish. This is a sheep's head fish. Uh, going back to Ikea and sketching some environments, right? Same thing for environments as for sketching small products. Keep it simple first, slowly add more detail as you go along there. More IKEA environments. Back to the Natural History Museum. S simple sketches, slowly add more detail, right? Taking one little thing and sketching much larger to get even more detail in there. So this is about twice the size. Eh, it could have been even larger, maybe even three, four times the size. Would have been nice. More fish. Sketching a blender inspired by fish. More fish inspired blenders. Off to the zoo. Zebras, flamingos. No pandas at that zoo. That must have just been from a reference photo. Sketching environments in person. Chameleon, a chameleon inspired toilet. Again, just taking some of the shapes in there. Again, when I'm doing demos and classes, not all the time and I'm, am I able to finish stuff. This is not my sketch. I was teaching an art center class on a field trip and we saw another instructor there and he and I exchanged books and we both did demos for our respective classes in the other person's books. So now I have some of Wayne's uh, sketches in here. And one of the things that's interesting looking at his sketches compared to my sketches is he sketches larger than me. And that reminds me, right, I, even though I've been sketching for a long time, I still have things I can learn. It would be great if I sketch larger on the page. Sketching food is always fun, really difficult. It's lots of texture. And back to sketching chairs again. 
So right, I, I learned something from Wayne. I started sketching larger on my pages. We'll see if I continued with that as we keep going through this. Some leaves and some plants, some tanks, right? Getting, getting close up in some details, small sketches at first, larger and larger as they keep going. Some bags, how to cast shadows, going to the Griffith Observatory, back to Ikea, again at Ikea, again at the zoo, right? So I'm, because I'm teaching class, I'm going to multiple places all the time. Uh, the gorilla lying down, kind of doing some yoga stretches, it looks like, and stretching out her legs. Adding some stuff to this otter, right? I wasn't sure if it was male or female, um, but regardless, this, oh, it was female, because I added just a sign there, but very hot. So this otter was probably being pretty lazy. And that's another thing, is like, these little notes like this can add a lot to your pages that you can remember things, it helps you remember like that day when you were there in that moment. The sketch helps you remember. Again, additional notes help you remember. Some more plants. Someone asked how to do like uh, water droplets on the plant. And so the little demo of that right there. Sketching people on the train. More people on the train, always fun. One of the, one of the fun things about sketching people on the train is also you have limited amount of time, but also can you sketch them before you realize, they realize you're sketching them. But if they realize and you ask, you show them. Um, a gentleman one time noticed me sketching him, and uh, he said, you know, if I was sketching him, I told him yes, and he said, oh, most of the time people just take pictures and they don't even ask. So I told him if he wanted a copy of the sketch, he said yes, and I was able to take a photo and email him, and he was so happy and thankful. So it can create positive experiences. Back to designing blenders, and this time inspired by a triceratops. It's that inspiration of the triceratops for that blender. More Triceratops reference, more fish. Again, lots of just loose line work. Contour lines can do a lot when all you have is line work on the page to describe those forms. This looks like a giant sea bass. Sketching some cars. Again, simple 2D sketches. We can see my proportion study here to help me go into 3D. Same thing again with like this uh, Mustang, it looks like. Or Camaro, uh-oh. I think it's Mustang. Zebra, elephant. Oh, this elephant's name is Shanzi, and she's 47 years old. Zebra study breaking it down. Some gorillas again. Some people on a, some guy on a bicycle must be on the train. Yep, on the Metro Gold Line. More people on different trains. More people. And a uh, Pasadena Pacific Asian Art Museum in Pasadena has a wonderful little collection of some various artifacts there. Right, when it's sketched, right, some smaller sketches at first. After I feel comfortable with it, right, going in and sketching that, that uh, much larger with more detail. Still got a few pages left in this book. A lot of pages to sort of finish up but I can always go back and add anything to them at any time. All right, thank you for letting me show that to you.